Today, the warrant for the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago had no mention of nuclear weapons. We get an exclusive on Beto O'Rourke's outburst last week. And Nancy Pelosi laments Republicans who voted against Mother Earth. We've got all of that and more coming up, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, and I, I, when I say welcome, I'm actually welcoming myself back to the program because there's no one else to do it for me. Uh, I was gone. We were in Florida. Enjoyed the time, but with two kiddos uh, on vacation, it's not quite as relaxing as uh, other vacations. So I feel like I need a vacation from my vacation. But I digress. I am glad on my first day back, I am joined by, uh, of course, my best friend, and uh, who <laughs> also happens to be Blaze TV host Chad Prather. I would say welcome back, but I haven't been here, here either. <laughs> Not on your show. At right, least. right. And I yeah, really haven't, haven't been anywhere here. since I'm banned on so many platforms at this point. Don't even get me started. Yeah, for those of you watching, looking for the Chad Prather show on YouTube, not this week again. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Chad, Chad said naughty things that you're not supposed to say, like truth and yeah. facts. They don't like those Ain't over that something over at YouTube. The the overlords over at YouTube. Uh, also joined by very excited uh, rapper and author Zuby, who I don't even need to say his last name because he's just Zuby. What's up? I only hope to get to the point in my <laughs> life where I oh, I can just be like, yeah, it's Sarah. I don't need a last name. Everyone You're already close. knows who I am. You're really close <laughs> to that. Yeah. Um, and I would just like to point out, I said author. He does have, I will tell you, this is not a prop. I actually, he'll tell you, I brought this from my house. It's called The Candy Calamity. For those of you listening on YouTube, it is a children's book. Uh, it, he, was, he did it in conjunction with uh, Brave Books and who put out great, great content for kids. And I actually brought this from my house because my son loves all of these books and he loves this one and I had to have Zuby sign it. Yep. So make sure that you, uh, you get these for your kids. Um, this is teaching them all about the importance of, I mean, you see Zuby, so the importance of being fit and healthy and, uh, you know, he signed staying it. active. He did, he signed yeah, it for it. He did, yeah. I know. So he didn't charge really money excited. or anything. I, well, I paid him. Uh, anyway. I've, I've been moving. <laughs> um, so, all right. So I want to get to all of this raid stuff. I was so pissed when I was gone. Uh, Chad texted me. He's like, oh, cool. You're, you're gone. And it's only like the most important thing in the news cycle in the <laughs> last, <laughs> what, two years? And you're gone. So that's great. Uh, so the, the raid over at Mar-a-Lago, uh, the United States District Court for the Southern District of Florida uh, just on Friday unsealed unredacted copies of the FBI search warrant and receipts of items taken from Mar-a-Lago uh, during the FBI raid. So Remember, there was a report floating around. I think it was Washington Post who said it first that there. Oh, there's a report that it he had nuclear uh, weapon codes. He had uh, information regarding nuclear access, nuclear codes, and that was what was so important. Except nowhere on the warrant or on the receipts of items taken uh, are nuclear weapons explicitly mentioned. Now they do say, you know, there's it's top secret information. They say that Trump is being investigated in part for potential violations of uh, the Espionage Act. But um, there's one document. Uh, this is attachment B for those of you who have reviewed the information. Uh, it refers to quote information, including communications in any form regarding the retrieval, storage, or transmission of national defense information or classified material. Um, it just seems kind of like the perfect, the perfect plan if you want to accuse someone of doing something that they didn't quite do that you get to hide behind the guise of like, well, it's top secret, so we can't actually show you the information. But trust us when we tell you that this unprecedented raid that we've just uh, committed, trust us when we tell you. It, Look, we've got it, all right? We've, we've got the information, we just can't show you. I'm amazed at how many people online that heretofore for the last two years have been experts in virology, in, a, in you know, infectious diseases are now nuclear experts and uh, really know the Constitution in terms of um, Espionage Act and, and mm -hmm. all of these different mm -hmm. laws that Donald Trump, who, I mean, screams dictatorial oh, right. spy. And, oh, of course. I mean, Saudi Arabia. I've, I've read it all on Twitter at this point. He's a Saudi Arabian spy. Ooh. What? Um, oh, yeah. No, that's Zuby. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all this kind of stuff. <laughs> he probably in cahoots with Zuby. 
Uh, but, it, you know, this guy that they have painted as being this moron, this empty-headed yeah. idiot for the last however many years now is this diabolical Lex Luthor who's sitting down there in Mar-a-Lago in his lair, you know, and, and he's just kind of wiggling his fingers looking for his way to plot and take over the world. It's pretty insane when you really just apply a little bit of common sense to this thing. Don't apply it to Barack Obama because, again, Obama, although he took thousands of documents with him for his library, he got permission. You forget the fact that the President of the United States can unilaterally, unilaterally declare mm -hmm. that stuff declassified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you're going to wait two years after he's out of office and bam, there it comes. Right, which which he did say. He was like, yeah, I declassified everything before we took I, it. But again, I still anticipate they will not stop until there is some form of, of an indictment and a perp walk. They, they want, they the, optics want the optics of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to also throw in here. So uh, Donald Trump apparently sent a private message to uh, U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland before his DOJ press conference uh, in which he, you know, Merrick Garland went on and said, I, this came from me. I approved it. Uh, this this came directly to me. Um, but uh, apparently Donald Trump said uh, the country is on fire. What can I do to reduce the heat? And that was the message that he wanted to, to pass to Merrick Garland. Uh, to Chad's point, Zuby, wow, what a dictator. <laughs> yeah. That is, that's, that's quite a dictator you have there saying the country is on fire. What can I do to help? And uh, this is the horrible, uh, traitorous dictator mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Well, something that's been interesting over the past, I guess, six to seven years at this point is that a lot of people who really, really despise and dislike Trump, both within the USA and outside of it, seem disappointed that he's not actually this fascist, mm -hmm. crazy, <laughs> racist, white supremacist tyrant that they want him to be. They want him to be the bad guy so much. I was saying the same thing when he, when he was still the sitting president, that people were disappointed that he was not acting in the manner that they wanted to be able to justify, mm. right? And it's, it's a really odd thing. I've never seen, I've just never seen them so go so hard at any one individual like this. And one of the things I often have to remind people about, especially even more so in the UK, is that Donald Trump has been in the public spotlight for my entire life, for decades and decades and decades. He was a very popular guy, extremely popular in the world of hip hop. Um, very, very popular guy. He had his TV, had his TV shows. He was well known. He was appearing on The View, all this and that. Yeah. Buddies with all these celebrities. And then in 2015, the machine, the machine just switched on him. He became such a threat to the system with his presidential run and then eventual administration that they just turned and it's like there's this collective amnesia where you're supposed to just forget everything that you know for the past few decades and you're just meant to believe all of these charges and accusations without evidence, right? I mean, if Donald Trump became, is all of these things, like when, when did he become... When did he become all of that? So, mm -hmm. you know, with all of this, I, I don't know what exactly what is what's going on. They obviously have targeted him. I mean, I think it's people still don't understand how deep it is that he got deplatformed from all the social media yeah. platforms. Yeah. People let their visceral and emotional hatred for the man supersede their rational thinking and supersede them being able to just stand on any type of principle. Mm -hmm. The fact that the sitting U.S. president was deplatformed from all the big platforms simultaneously and still hasn't got his accounts mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. That is insane. I'd say the exact same thing if it was Joe Biden getting deplatformed. If Joe Biden got taken off Facebook, Twitter, all the platforms on the same day in a coordinated yeah. at attack, I'd be like, no. The difference is that's Joe Biden wouldn't insane. know it. He wouldn't notice. He wouldn't know it because <laughs> he's not the one who's even actually sure. doing his stuff on social media. Sure, but people don't realize, I mean... It, it still blows my mind of, of how crazy that is because people yeah. think that, okay, if I don't like the person, it's this ends justifies the right. means I, way of thinking. So there's no principle. It's simply if I don't like this person, I don't care what happens to them and what gets weaponized against them. But those people are very short-sighted and don't realize, hey, if you can do that to a sitting president, former president, 
I mean, as a normal as a normal person. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Uh, what what, what hope do you have? Right, that's what I was going to say. What hope do any of us have yeah. uh, at surviving on any of these platforms? And I realize that a lot of people would say, well, I mean, it's just a social media platform. Just get off of it. But especially for, I mean, for a lot of yeah. industries, specifically ours, like you, you have to be on there. That's it's part of your it's part of your work. I mean, isn't um, that in, in election interference? If you're if you deplatform someone who is a politician or someone who's right. going to be running, right. is that not a form of direct? I mean, these are people who are always talking about threat to democracy, yeah. threat to democracy. I mean, if someone is running for, say, say in 2024, mm -hmm. someone's running to to be president or someone's running for con whatever in the midterms, and you completely deplatform that, but they can't reach people, they can't get their message out there, and so on, using these new methods. Not even new. I mean, we're talking 15 years now. Then. That's in. That's a direct interruption of the democratic process. If you're, mm -hmm. and, and people need to remember that he didn't do anything criminal. Like right. he he got deplatformed because they claimed that he didn't tell people, oh, go out there and right. riot and he fight. Literally he literally said peacefully and patriotically yeah. make your voices yeah. heard. Yeah, and I think people have forgotten because the media machine's been working and they've forgotten what what even supposedly led to that which, happening. Which which. I think is why they did it in the first place, mm. because then there was, they wanted to like get that out of the way, memory hole it, and then no one can go back to his Twitter and see what he said yeah. because it's completely erased mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, from anyone being able to fact check all of these media it's outlets. Gone. Yeah. yeah. Like a Hillary email. I mean, it's yeah. just it vanished. It's, <laughs> and gone. it's wild. And the truth is, look, we, we all spend time on social media. And the stuff we see every day, I mean, I've seen at least 30 things aimed specifically at Sarah spe <laughs> personally that are infinitely more egregious yes, thank you. than anything. But like all of us, you see it every <laughs> single day. You log in and you see stuff yeah. that is far more egregious. Yeah, yeah my, than listen, any my, my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Just on the phone yesterday, she's a social media neophyte. She goes, boy, Sarah catches a lot of grief. <laughs> they really say a lot of things to her. Yeah. They do. They do. I know. They're People are wild. Y'all are wild. Stop wild. it. Stop <laughs> it. Act right. All right. Um, I want to also throw in here as we're talking about all of this FBI stuff. Uh, so Congressman Jim Jordan, uh, of course, he's the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee. He told Fox News that the number of FBI whistleblowers who are coming to his office trying to tell him what is going on in the FBI uh, has r risen to, I believe it's 14 now following this raid at Trump's resort. Let's watch that. The template never changes with these guys. It's the left creates a lie. Big media, mainstream press reports the lie. Big tech amplifies the lie. And then when we try to tell the truth, they call us names and try to cancel us and tell us and tell the world that, oh, we're the ones not, not being square with them. So the country, though, the good news is they figured it out. And I'll tell you who else has figured it out, Trey. And you and John, with your background in law enforcement, appreciate this. 14 FBI agents have come to our office as whistleblowers. And they are good people. There are lots of good people in the FBI. It's the top that's the problem. But the, some of these good agents are coming to us telling us this is baloney what's going on. The political nature now of the Justice Department, God bless them for doing it. Coming and talking to us about the school board issue, about a whole host of issues. I mean, it's becoming a well-worn trail of agents who say this has got to stop. I mean, I guess maybe that's a silver lining is that there are still some good ones who are left in the agency because it really feels like it is rotting right now from the top down. You look at, uh, as he pointed out, uh, all of the parents being treated as domestic terrorists. That came from the top. You're talk, you talk about the, uh, the Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot that now we're hearing more and more coming out about that, that these FBI informants. I'm just going to say basically entrapped these people um, because when it was there, it, it was the informants' ideas. Uh, you know, you had the informants <laughs> drumming it all up, uh, you know, coming up with it, getting people to go along on purpose. You find out that the informant, they said, slept in the same room uh, and in the same bed with uh, one of the defendants and smoked weed with one of the defendants. And, you know, it's just like, <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we doing here? And And somehow I feel like... It's not going to stop. I feel like how do we how do we course correct here? 
Well, I mean, look at the roots and the foundation of the FBI. J. Edgar Hoover was somebody that kept a file on people. He was vindictive. Uh, he was pretty nefarious in his own living and lifestyle and his way of, you know, doing things that he did. He, you know, he, he made sure that people uh, understood that if they got out of line, they were going to be blackmailed. So apparently they're living up to the legacy, right? I mean, they're doing exactly what they were founded on. Mm -hmm. They operate out of the J. Edgar Hoover building in Washington, D.C. So at this stage, nobody's shocked by anything. The reports we hear from January 6, the things we've seen mm -hmm. with, you know, the guys out there trying to look incognito and they're <laughs> the Fed boys out yeah, there at yeah. these protests and these rallies. And it's it's a joke at this point. It's just an open secret. Everybody sees it. And but we're not supposed to talk about that because you're just as someone just sent me a message. You uh, tin foil hat grifters at the blaze oh. who, <laughs> who want everybody to believe your conspiracies. Who mm -hmm. end up being correct six percent percent correct. I mean, there's a lot of people that owe us apologies right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Somehow I don't think we're going to get those, Chad. Uh, Zuby, last word on this. Yeah, I think one of the biggest problems we have across society now, and this isn't brand new, but the incentive, the incentive structure is broken. Um, and the reason why all of these agencies, these alphabet agencies and people from the CDC to the FBI to all, all of them, they're losing credibility because they just lie and lie and lie. And it's very disorienting and dis deranging because you don't know what's true anymore. Yeah. Right. Even when it comes to the media, when it comes to these tech platforms, it's very hard to know who or what you can trust. And that actually makes things really challenging for society because then even if something comes out and it's true, mm. it's the boy who cried wolf thing, right? Right, right. You don't know where to look at, what the authority is, and if you can actually trust that authority. So it just leads to even more partisanship and more division and more confusion. And it's it's a big problem. It's gotten so political as well. That I, I know we got to take a break in a second, but it's gotten so political as well that um, I think you mentioned incentives and motivation. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of these people are, they know that if they go along with the political narrative that is being spun at these, as you pointed out, alphabet agencies, that they'll get a promotion, yep. right? So like that's their incentive to go along with the political narrative just to c continue to like get a leg up in their career. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sad to say, but that's kind of what it's turned into. Um, all right, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor of this segment, Home Title Lock. So uh, if if you don't know what home title fraud is, consider yourself lucky because that means it hasn't happened to you yet. Uh, the thing about home title fraud is that someone could actually go online where your home's title is kept, forge your signature uh, on a quit claim deed stating that you sold your house to them and then they can take out loans against your equity and you're not going to know it until the collection calls start for the loans that you never took out. Don't let that happen, okay? Uh, you can go to HomeTitleLock.com. You enter your address for free. This is a no obligation home title scan, and then you can find out if someone is already trying to worm their way onto your home's title. Uh, there's not, like, identity theft programs, common banking programs, nothing protects you from this other than Home Title Lock, so make sure that you are protected. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. You can use my promo code RADIO and then uh, enter your address. That is, it's going to be a $100 value when you do this for free. Make sure you take advantage of that. It's HomeTitleLock.com, promo code RADIO. Last week, of course, while I was on vacation, big news about our good friend, Robert Francis O'Rourke. Uh, he confronted a uh, someone who was attending his campaign event. Uh, there was laughter, they said, whenever O'Rourke was making these claims that AR-15s were made only for Vietnam. And uh, he, he cursed a little bit. He said a bad word, of course. Uh, I'm sure you guys watched it if you watched this program last week, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and replay that. Uh, from last week, watch. Now 11 weeks since we lost 19 kids and their two teachers shot to death with a weapon originally designed for use in combat, legally purchased by an 18 year old who did not try to obtain one when he was 16 or 17, but followed the law that's on the books, ladies and gentlemen, that says that you can buy not one, you can buy two or more if you want to, AR-15s, hundreds of rounds of ammunition and take that weapon that was originally designed for use on the battlefields in Vietnam to penetrate an enemy soldier's helmet at 500 feet and knock him down dead up against kids at five feet. It may be funny to you, but it's not funny to me. Okay? So 
So, of course, you know, anyone with half a brain can watch the theatrics of this guy talking about an AR-15 being, you know, designed for, it's a weapon of war, it's designed for combat, it's made to go through someone's helmet in Vietnam, and he gets down on the ground, so theatrical. I actually was laughing to myself while I was watching the clip because it's just so preposterous and absurd, uh, but the way that it was spun in the media was, of course, this guy. What a jerk, right? What a horrible jerk. Someone would laugh at children being shot. That's horrible. Oh, except that's not what he was laughing about, which is what the mainstream media doesn't want to tell you. So I decided to just have him join us on the program. This is Ron Warren, uh, who is, you own a, a, a gun store. Me and my wife own and son own a gun store in Mineral Wells, Texas. Okay, and it's uh, called what? An, I, an eye for an eye. An eye for an eye. eye. Yep. And so explain to everyone, Ron, why you were laughing. He's telling the story about how, you know, the, these kids and everything. He gets off that subject, goes to the next subject, telling everybody that he's, um, you know, that it's a weapons of war and, yeah. and everything. And I was like, I'm sitting there to myself thinking, wow. And at 500 feet and everything, and, and I start laughing about it, and he, he turned around just when he calls me the bad name. Yeah. And I just sit there and look at him like, really? We're in a town hall meeting, and this is our next? Governor? Yeah. Well, I mean, we hope he, not. <laughs> he's political, you know, he, he's politicizing the wrong thing. He's taking it out on the gun. He tried to make it look like that the um, kid did the right thing. He bought it legally and all that. Right. He took the blame off the kid, put the blame on the guns. And everybody that's a gun owner knows guns can lay right here on this table and they will not shoot you. Mm -hmm. Any veteran, any gun owner would have went into that school and helped them those kiddos out mm -hmm. and took care of those kids. We had a bunch of cowards that day. And then he goes down there to the to, to the Uvalde the day after and, and, yeah. and disgraces their name. Yeah. And now I've got people just just hitting me right and left on Facebook, calling me. So it's it's interesting that, that you bring that up. So so you've gotten a bunch of death threats, a lot of people calling you, which I, I assume is the way that I found you, which was Mineral Wells local news did a story with you. They interviewed you. Um, okay. And uh, it said that you owned a gun store. So I searched you. That was how I found you. And, you know, there's a, a phone number there, um, except they're using it, of course, to threaten you. I believe that we have one of the voicemails that you have, one of the many that you have received. Uh, let's listen to that. I just want to understand why you thought 19 kids being murdered was funny. Oh, no, I didn't. I thought it was funny about the gun. Sorry, Warren, you're a piece of Give me a call. Let's talk about it. Yeah, those are the those are the people with the moral high ground. Yeah, right? what I, and I'm curious to know because I've been to plenty of political rallies and uh, campaign rallies. It, it, Sarah's had her adventures at a yeah. Francis O'Rourke yeah. rally. How was it going in there? Well, when we got in there, we were back in a corner. It was me, my son, and a couple of my buddies came with us. We all went. We're at the very back, and everybody's got Beto shirts on. It's then we start hearing the. the gossip that they got bust in. Mm. A lot of those people was not even men or wealth people. Really? Oh, oh no, they were bust in. They were bust in. And I love hearing so this. Th so then there was a group of people came in, about four people, and we motioned them over. They had Abbott signs, and they handed it all to us. When they come over, they saw my shirt that said, Beto, fake Mexican, real pendejo, yeah. and they went. <laughs> and then they looked at it, and they go, oh, they started laughing. So they all hung with us, and we hung in that group. If we said one little word, very quietly, they had their handlers on us, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm, jumping on us. You gotta mm -hmm. be quiet. Yep. And I said, I'm just telling my son something. And they kept doing that. They it's wanted just, a reason to kick they, you yeah, out. They wanted a reason. And now they're even saying that I was paid. I was a plant mm. with O'Rourke. Mm -hmm. I have not received no money. <laughs> like, I sure wish I, I would <laughs> right, have, because right. now I mean, I'm just getting the death threats. George Soros gave him a million. Right. I, I need some cash. Yeah, I mean, where, where's your cut? <laughs> yeah. Where's your cut? Yeah. I just, you know, it's just unfortunate to me, and, and I wanted to have you on here to, to, to tell your side of things, because I just think that it's very gross for a politician to, to put the spotlight on someone in the audience who has attended his rally. I mean, you didn't, trust me, he's had hecklers. I know some of them, right? That wasn't you. Um, and I just think that it's very unfortunate that they, they're they just putting you on display, letting you take all of this blame as if anyone would laugh about children being shot in Uvalde. Mm -hmm. Zubi. Yeah, this is just what happens when, again, it comes down to the this thing of not dealing with honest actors. Yeah. You know, Peter yeah. O'Rourke, he's, he's not an honest actor in any way, shape, or form. This is someone who 
for years and years is so desperate for whatever reason to get into a position of power, whether that's governor, whether that's president. We can see the desperation. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton had the same, has the same weird thing of just being obsessed with seeking this power. And when someone wants that power that badly and is willing to stand on the graves and virtue signal around mm -hmm. dead children and suggest that anyone who doesn't share their same policies or share their whatever that they don't care about the kids, like. It's grotesque. Yeah. People can have people can have um, different views and ideas on what they think the right solution is. I'm from the UK, so I totally understand the anti-gun position. Mm. That's not new or foreign to me. I also very much understand the pro-2A position. I've spent lots of time in lots of different countries, so I get the positions, but it's so cynical and dishonest and yeah, gross to say yeah. that, look, if you don't have the same politics as me on this issue, then it's because you don't care about these children yeah. or to even suggest that um, you were laughing, that that's what you were laughing at. Right. Oh, he was, he was laughing at the, of, of, of course not. And right. I think people know that that's not true, but it's this weapon that they can wield mm -hmm. and they can use it to strike fear in people and to get cow people to their behavior. You see different groups doing this. Trans activists are amazing at doing this, right? That's why they're always talking about, you, you want people to <laughs> kill themselves and you're erasing people right. and you're opening them to violence. All, they use this rhetoric which is designed to make you sound like the hateful person, mm -hmm. whereas I believe it's all projection. Yeah. Um, so, Ron, are you concerned at all for your your business, your, your business safety? Safety, not really. I mean, I'm worried about my son because he helps me every day. He works with me. Mm -hmm. He's a young man. He's a very good young man. Everybody knows him. And uh, he's a, he hasn't been around the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we carry every day. Right. That's our constitutional right we do carry. And, you know, I've got a lot of friends in that town, and they're yeah. really good people. They're real good people in that town. But you got O'Rourke. He's been trained. He's been, you know, I think he's been going down this road, and they've been guiding him all along. Mm -hmm. He's got the right answer. I mean, the lady even on that interview said, would you sit down with him? No. There's, there's no way I can sit down. And no. Sit, because he know, he's been trained to say the right words, the right time, yes. the right thing. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, and I appreciate you at least going into, you know, that territory and with an attempt to hold these guys accountable because what he's saying is not true. Mm -hmm. It is a narrative. It's an ideologically driven narrative, and you did that. Uh, these guys should expect that. I won't yeah. say they're going to welcome it, but they should expect it. Right. It should be in there. Um, it, it's it's he's He's running to represent every citizen of Texas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and it, he should be have a thick enough skin to be disagreed with when he's being facetiously wrong mm -hmm. on the facts right. when it comes to these firearms. Which I'm glad that you pointed that out because, and I know we got to wrap in a second, but I'm glad you pointed that out because uh, he's the one who so often says, we're, we're running to represent all of Texas. We're running to represent everyone. And it's like, well, I don't think that you really should be calling your constituents MFers. No. It's just not something I think probably you should be doing if you actually claim to respect all of them. I call my friends that, not strangers. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. yeah, all my friends call me up and tell me now that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, no. That's, that's Ron's nickname now forever. I'm yes. so sorry, Ron. Um, well, we appreciate you setting the record straight. Again, uh, you know, it, the, they need the love and support uh, over there at an eye for an eye, guns and ammo. Go yeah, ahead, Ron. I mean, we watched our business uh, ratings go from a five Friday all the way down to 2.9 Saturday. Oh. Some of my friends have put some stuff and it's built it back up. Yeah, yeah. If you're out there, please take care of us. Yeah. Okay. We're a small, it's just me, my wife, yeah. and it's a family you know, my dog, and that's it. We just, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, my dog gave out hand cards. That's so cute. And everything, she's sweet, she's loved in them. Well. But it's just, you know, I don't want no one thinking, I know anybody that's a gun owner would have went into that school, yeah. would never have made fun of those kids. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just catching the heck, but I'm a well, big boy. Well, I'm a big boy. I well, can well you are, but there's no reason hey. for it. So if you guys are, if you guys can do Ron a solid, uh, make sure that you uh, make up for all of these leftist cancel culture dummies. All right, uh, Ron, thank you very much for be, for being here. We gotta we gotta take a, a break. Uh, I first want to thank very quickly Sweatblock. So look, Sweatblock is there for those of you who maybe you got a little too much uh, sweat glands over here in the underarms, and you get embarrassed because you're outside, especially here in Texas when it's 10 billion degrees 
out. And as soon as you walk outside, you've got like giant wet marks on your shirt. Don't let that happen. You can get the sweat block wipes. Uh, you apply them at night and it will actually keep you protected for up to seven days. And I know this for a fact because, again, we live in Texas and my husband uh, has used them and they work. OK, I told him this is going to stop your sweat. And he was like, yeah, OK, whatever, Sarah. Um, but no, he now he says, holy crap, it works. And if it works in Texas, it works anywhere. OK, you got to go to sweatblock.com. Use promo code news and you'll get 20 percent off over at sweatblock.com. Promo code news. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, good old Karen Warren, uh, <laughs> in a, a new book by an NBC News correspondent. It says, Electable, Why America Hasn't Put a Woman in the White House Yet. An excerpt explaining why Elizabeth Warren didn't become president reads, Back on the plane in the hours following the January 2020 Iowa caucus, hurtling into the New Hampshire and toward the next primary, down but not yet out, she knew at least one explanation for why uh, she said she's responding to what people want to hear, Elizabeth Warren said. But uh, she said that, um, look, everyone, everyone, she said, comes up to her and says, I would vote for you if you had a penis, which... That's exactly what I said to yeah, her. I same. don't think literally ever happened. No Except, one has said that. Right, but it's really funny because it's like if that were true, the people attending your rallies are Democrats. So you're basically pointing out that Democrats are sexist. Am I did I miss something? Nope. What's a woman? <laughs> oh, What's a, yeah. That's a great point. I mean, why would the penis even matter to them? Because both men and women have penises. Mm. Women can have penises, so, we're told. If men can have babies, women can have penises. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't that, even, I don't think anyone said that to her, but even no. if they did, they themselves are showing their internalized These transphobia and sexist. misogyny mm -hmm. and racism because she's Native American, right? Yes. So one, they're racist. Uh, one, one thousand twenty four. If she can identify as yeah. Native American, she can identify as having a penis. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think they're being very consistent. Yeah. Them, them's the rules, guys. You created them. They, them's the rules. <laughs> they, them. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I want to get to one more thing this segment. Of course. Nancy Pelosi. What a woman. Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> uh, which Chad has a nickname for her, which I won't say on this program. Mm. But <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, he, she, so she claimed that Republicans who voted against the Inflation Reduction Act, which, by the way, we have heard from nonpartisan agencies that it actually doesn't do anything to uh, reduce inflation. In fact, it actually sort of hurts and makes it worse, but that's okay. What are facts, really? Uh, Nancy Pelosi actually says, if you're voting against this, you're actually voting against your Mother Earth. Yes. Watch. How can they vote against the planet? Yes. Mother Earth. Mother Earth gets angry from time to time, oh my gosh. and uh, this legislation will help us address all of that. I, all right, I, I could ask you for insightful uh, analysis, but I want to know first, how many shots do you think she took before she did that? She is infused. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. She is like a frat party where you soak the melons in the liquor. Yeah, I yeah. mean, she is saturated. <laughs> Completely soaked. It's just coming out of her pores. It's out of her pores. Point. I mean, she flew to Taiwan or wherever she went in Asia on Smirnoff 1 and <laughs> got off and she came back from Asia. China. Is, I love how proud she looks when she tries to make a point. Like, yeah. I got something out. <laughs> Mother Earth gets mad at us. <laughs> It's like, what the hell does Mother Earth and I, nature have to do with reducing inflation? It's so strange. Everything. The, the, I don't, man, do you guys know how, I mean, I know it's goofy from the inside, but mm. these politicians from the, from the outside, like, people around the world are looking at this and just, what on? It's a clown what, show. What on, I mean, I'm not, I'm not here saying that British politicians are made, yeah. but the, the level of silliness yeah. Yeah. of some of these American politicians now is just wild. So, isn't it's isn't wild. it funny though, because these are the same people who, are, who always said, the, the world is laughing at us because we have Donald Trump as president. And I'm like, have you seen yourself lately? They're court gestures. So, you know, you look at the media, you know, Woodward and Bernstein, they became celebrity journalists, but they actually did the work. They kind of deserved to be celebrities because of what they did. Now every media person wants to be a celebrity. Well, that's fed over into the politics. Mm. Politicians want to be celebrities. Mm -hmm. and, and we make them celebrities, right? Mm. And we, we do that. So it is. It's, it's court gestures. It's, it's a clown show. I, I'm so glad you make that point because that's one huge distinction between the USA and every other country that I'm aware of, which mm -hmm. is that 
politicians here have merch. They do. Yeah. Like that in itself. You can buy shirts. That yeah. in itself is wild. Yeah. Right. And like, and, and you know, it's it's, all, it's on both sides of the of the aisle. But like, if someone if someone in the UK was wearing like a Boris Johnson t shirt or hat, like, yeah. it would be the weirdest. Like, people would be like, what? Like, what is wrong yeah. with this person? Yeah. Like, it's so interesting. So maybe it's because maybe here's here's a theory. Maybe because like the UK has like an actual monarchy. Mm. And it already has this kind of weird, like, class system in that regard, which dates back many, many centuries. I, I feel like many politicians, he, like in the UK, politicians are just looked at on the same level as everyone else. They're not special. They don't move with these huge sec so secret security forces, and mm -hmm. they're just there. Like, they're they're very well, reachable. I mean, um, whereas here, they're they're elevated to this kind of like royalty, celebrity yeah, they level. Are. Um, people idolize them. Yeah, people really yeah. idolize them. On both sides of the fence, they, they, I yeah, both people sides, do, they people do, do really they try, idolize they, them, they, and that's They different. navigate life through politics here in America, and that's a bad thing, mm -hmm. especially when you make somebody kind of your North Star, and that's what you, 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 you know, you put them up on a pedestal. They mm -hmm. can do no right or they can do no and wrong. And I think, by the way, this is why. So, I mean, if you, I mean, the UK can't even keep a prime minister because they keep all getting forced to re resign. Yeah. Yeah. Because if they lie to the people too much yeah. or if they break their own policies, we're like, all the COVID stuff dropped in the UK because it was found out that they were breaking all the rules. Mm -hmm. right. In the US, plenty of mayors, governors, et cetera, broke all the rules, yeah. but they were never held to account because no. again, None of they're them. viewed as these like untouchable celebrities. In the UK, They'll 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 be forced to resign, especially yeah. with Gavin. People Newsom, really hold them accountable because I mean, pe they had the chance in California to mm -hmm. get rid of him, and they still kept him. Yep, that still kept really him. says a lot. Yeah, it's it's interesting, and um, I think it's similar in other European countries. Like in in France, they'll be out on the street, and they'll yeah. be wow. the, the exception know? to your rule <laughs> under that uh, under that monarchy. Uh, it would be Canada because Justin Trudeau. I mean, that guy, he is entrenched. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah, so. yeah, that is true. Um, all right, we got to take another quick break. We want to thank our sponsor, Healthy Cell. Zuby, you're going to like this one because this is this is up your alley, I think. This is like the next generation of dietary supplements. We use them at my house. Uh, they've got a ton of different kinds. you got to go check them out. But if you are taking a multivitamin in pill form, you're wasting your money because you're not absorbing all of what is being promised on the label. Healthy Cell is, it's a little gel pack, and so you can open it up, you can mix it in water, you can mix it, I just take it straight because it tastes delicious, and uh, I don't need to mix it in water, but you can mix it in a smoothie, whatever you want, but you are getting 165% more absorption than the pills. So stop wasting your money on pills, throw them out. This is really, really good for you. It's got a bunch of gut healthy ingredients, really, really good clean ingredients, and you know that you're getting the promised results. You've got uh, multivitamin, we've got the REM sleep one that my husband swears by. Um, we use all of them at our house. You gotta go check out their line of products. It's healthycell.com slash news. If you use promo code news, you'll get 20% off your first order. That is healthycell.com slash news. CBS Mornings uh, just recently ran a segment explaining why children are 30% less fit than their parents were at the same age. And man, the mental gymnastics they use for this one, you just have to see for yourself, watch. A new study showing how climate change, specifically higher temperatures, is making our children uh, oh. more inactive and more obese. The study published in oh. a journal Temperature found today's hmm. children are 30% less aerobically fit than their parents were at their age. Hmm. Fewer children are reaching the World Health Organization's recommendation of 60 minutes of exercise a day. Now, listen, it huh. has been a lot hotter, hotter and the weather has been crazy, oh. but I think it also has to do with technology. You know, yeah. it's, it, it's one thing not to go outside, but these kids don't go outside because they can stay inside, <laughs> yeah. be on their phones, play video games, and be social without having to go outside and be social. Now, to, no kidding. She, listen, it, it, it'd be Why fair, are you it, talking about climate change? Even they're making fun of me. I know. They're like, I mean, they're like, he's saying you it, can he's see like, it in their face. Well, I don't actually want to be forced to report this and look like an idiot, so I'm probably going to throw in these other things, yeah, too. And, and I mean, I agree with him on the technology thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people are spending, I mean, we've got a problem. I mean, psychologically, it's crazy how much time people are spending in front of their devices. That's everybody. And, um, you know, not only that, what about, let's talk about food additives. Let's talk about all the food we eat that ain't real food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absence yeah. of physical education yeah. in schools. Yes. Less people participating in team sports and solo sports. So. Well, what about, too, um, and Zuby, I feel like you are, of course, the expert on this, and don't forget to get uh, Zuby's book uh, for children. Calamity. Yes, The Candy Calamity, which addresses this. But, like, mm. 
all of this stuff, it blows my mind when I hear all of the food additives, as Chad pointed out, all of the chemicals and stuff that they use in the United States food that is banned in the UK mm. and like a bunch of other places, but the United States just allows all of it in. That's a huge issue yeah. that needs to be discussed. The, the pharmaceutical and food industries in the USA are out of control. Yep. Yep. So many Americans don't even know that this is one of only two countries where you're allowed to advertise mm -hmm. prescription drugs direct to consumer. It's mm -hmm. only legal in the USA and New Zealand. Everywhere else in the world, they're like, nope, yeah. you can't do this. So all these ads about, you know, ask your doctor about this, and then they list off the five million side effects. Yeah. That's <laughs> illegal everywhere else. There's so many food additives from colorings to certain types of uh, fats and additives that are completely legal and present in a lot of the processed foods here in the US and every grocery store and all across Europe in the UK, mm -hmm. they're not legal because they've looked into them and found out either they're carcinogenic mm -hmm. or they cause some other type of problems, so. Which by the way, they usually offer the product still, they just use the cleaner ingredients for everywhere they, else. They do, you, here, here's a funny one. I mean, if you know the like kids cereals, things, yeah. like, things like Trix and Fruit Loops, they look different. If you look at the American, the pour a bowl of the American one, pour a bowl, mm -hmm. pour a bowl of the UK or European ones, they look different. The, the American one's like hyper color. Like of the, course. The colors are glowing. Right. It's like paint. Right. And then it's, mu it's much more muted. Uh -huh. It's colorful, but it's much more muted mm. in the UK. They gotta they, use they, that they natural stuff. Yeah, because they can't use all the same dyes and yeah. pigments and yeah. stuff. Yeah, And yeah. I'm just like, yeah, as, a, as an outsider, you really, really notice it. I think if you spend a lot of time in the States, you don't, you kind of stop seeing it. But if you go out or you were raised elsewhere and you come in, you're like, whoa, this is weird. What's up with that? Right. Which, I mean, you know, I, I used to be like, yeah, but we don't want government regulation. And I'm like, you know, if we're going to have regulation, <laughs> I'd rather have it on this crap than all of the other stuff you're trying to regulate us from mm -hmm. doing. Right. That's yeah. all you have? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, look, I, who am I? You know, I come on here. I'm with the world's strongest woman, first of all. It's Zuda. true. Hey, it's hey. true. And, and well, here I am with the ultimate dad bod. You know, I'm addicted to the food that ain't food, so I'm kind of hypocritical want, in this whole deal. But I was an athlete, you know. I there played even higher level athlete, you know, athletics. And, and, you know, historically speaking, I've been, it, you know, kids these days, we've all, we've become a lazy culture, right? Yeah. We've become a lazy, and you're right, we, we enable it. And, you know, you want to reference the World Health Organization. It's an organization mm -hmm. that does not care about your health. Do you know, nice. no, do you, uh, here's another big one, yeah. big one in the what? States as well, is that you can't walk anywhere. We, yeah. it's, most places are not yeah. mo yeah. most There's true. a handful of walkable Maybe cities New in the York States. City, yeah. Handful of them. Yeah. But everywhere else, like, if you don't have a car, I mean, you, you can't, some places you, you can't even drive across the street to go to the store. Sorry, That's you can't point. walk across. Yeah. Um, so the way that the cities are laid out is totally different to how they are all across Europe, which makes sense because the cities here were based around cars existing. Right, right, um, right. So stuff is built on a, Dallas is on a totally different scale to London or Paris or mm -hmm. Prague or whatever it is. But that's actually quite a big problem because it means people don't just get those daily steps in. Yeah. And it's actually pretty hard to reach um, even 10,000 steps a day. If you're not going to the gym, right. hitting that sort of standard of 10,000 plus steps a day is actually pretty hard unless you very consciously go out of your way to do it. That's a good point. I'm just saying though, if you have kids, just like, just throw them outside and make <laughs> them go play. It's very easy. I do it to my children all the time. We gotta take a quick break. We'll be right back. I'm, I don't get it. Like, huh? I'm like, I, I don't get it. I'm like. It's called the Fauci effect, which is sort of like, you know, as, trust me, I'm, I, I don't get excited about that. <laughs> I mean, it's nice, but I mean, it's, it's I, I, people go to medical school now, people are interested in science, not because of me, because people, most people don't know me, who I am. My friends know me, my wife knows me, but people don't know me. It's what I symbolize. And what I symbolize mm -hmm. In, a, in an era of the normalization of untruths mm. and lies mm. and, and all the things you're seeing going on in society from mm -hmm. January 6th mm. to everything else that goes on, mm -hmm. people okay. the craving for consistency, for integrity, for truth, and for people caring about people. Oh, and that's what, that's what Dr. Anthony Fauci represents, wouldn't you guys say? Well, he left out climate change. That's disappointing. <laughs> I mean, you're not, he didn't touch all the bases. He did no. talk. He did mention January 6th, though. He didn't course, mention so the like LGBTQIAAP yeah. community. That's a great point. He didn't mention black and brown bodies. That's, um, that's a great point. So I'm a bit triggered. Wow. Yeah. He didn't mention abortion? 
You women's rights. That. That's women's no, health. Yeah, Sorry, no. women's reproductive, reproductive health Women's reproductive health. Yes, I forgot. I on. forgot. Reproductive justice. What a narcissistic piece of trash. <laughs> I avoided the swear jar, all right? Well, you know, in, in his defense, I mean, it's a joke, right? It's all in good humor. A million Is people it? died, right, in this pandemic, Is so it it's just a big joke. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Of course it is. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you're following both of these gentlemen. We'll see you tomorrow.